Hey guys, I just heard about this uh, interview that was done by GameSpot and I heard that it has a lot of interesting stuff within it regarding Genshin's future so I wanted to see um, what it was all about. So, this is going to be largely unedited, I just kind of want to go through it see see how it is. And uh, you guys can share your thoughts with me in the comments below. Now let's just get started. So, well, to give a brief uh, summary. GameSpot had an interview with the Genshin developers regarding the game's future for stuff like resin caps, end game content, and more. So, it seems like it'd be very interesting, especially for veterans of the game, to know what they have planned in the future. Because uh, one of the recent curveballs that they tossed our way was a TCG, which to me sounds very fun, but also doesn't really relate to the game. So, let's just see. Let's get started. Okay. Oh, this is a, this is a good question. Currently, the Spiral Abyss is the only true endgame content for players at high adventure ranks. Are there any plans to release new, permanent endgame content in the same vein as Spiral Abyss? I would hope so, because that is literally the only part of the game where leveling up your artifacts and your talents actually matter. But let's see. So this is what the developer said. The Spiral Abyss is one of the most effective ways for players to test out their party compositions and combat strength. Very true. In fact, it is pretty much the only way, except for like... The challenge events like Hyakunin Iki or whatever that's called. If we design another type of permanent endgame that is similar to Spiral Abyss, it might end up creating excessive anxiety for our players. Not everyone is interested in Musk Reef. What? Oh boy. Okay. Um. Are you serious? Okay. Wow. Um. Okay, let's just keep reading. Uh, just like the Genius Invocation TCG that we unveiled in the special program for version 3.2, we are also working on designing more interesting gameplay in the future. As an open world game, gameplay uh, Genshin Impact has a natural compatibility with various types of gameplay, which gives us confidence in the long term operation. And that was their answer. Okay, that's. That's not good, to be honest. So what they're essentially saying is um, that they have no plans for, for further endgame content. Okay. So, uh, okay. so uh, Spiral Abyss will be the only way to test out your artifacts, your talent levels, your party comps. That sucks. Seriously? So, uh, okay. You know what? Uh, I'll just, I'm just going to keep going. Genshin Impact is going into year two with an ever-expanding roster. Some older characters might get left behind as power creep settles in and newer characters become much stronger choices. Very true, just look at d Luke, my boy. He's kind of power creep now. Is there a plan in place to potentially upgrade older characters and make them more viable? I, again, hope so because many gacha games do this because it refreshes older units and makes them worthwhile. Well, let's see what they said. If a character is only assessed by a single dimension of numerical strength, power creep could indeed be an issue. However, in Genshin Impact, the rules of gameplay are more impactful than how strong a character is. Therefore, new battlegrounds, new challenge levels, and even new team builds all have potential to bring life to existing content. Okay, so what they're saying is no, they are not going to be buffing older characters. So sorry, D. Luke, you're going to stay power crept. It, they. Ugh. It's like, uh, they imply that there might be future changes to the game that might make older characters resurface. For example, Kaching and Kuki Shinobu had a huge resurgence, oh, Yamiko as well, thanks to Dendro. And um, Dendro made them much stronger. Here's the thing though, Dendro was always the seventh element that wasn't in the game, right? There's no way we're getting another wave of something on the scale of Dendro again. So unless they literally ban characters from events or make the battleground, like battle level, super weird where you need archers or something, older characters are literally never going to be used. Listen, I love d Luke, but every time I use d Luke in my party, it's just for drip because he's always weaker than my Hu Tao, my Yoimiya, stuff like that. Okay, so far two, two main questions and two of the answers have been absolute duds. Okay, let's just keep going. Um, the introduction of Dendro has created plenty of new ways to cause elemental reactions, but some elements have been left out. 
Has there been any discussion regarding the new addition for new reactions for existing elements? For example, in the future, could there be new Geo or Dendro reactions? Or a new Geo and Dendro reaction? And they say that there are no plans for the time being. With the release of the Dendro element, the seven element system has become somewhat complex for us. Uh, for us, there are other ways to increase the fun for players rather than increasing the complexity of game rules. We're not toddlers. Like, Genshin is not what I call a simple game, right? Like, trying to get BIS, trying to artifact farm, which is built into the game, by the way. Artifact farming and talent leveling involves a lot of, like, math, right? We're not babies. We can take extra game rules. In fact, we all took the new Dendro reactions in stride, and now they're awesome. I love the new Dendro reactions. I do get that uh, Geo and Dendro don't need to be a reaction, because um, it's kind of like Animo and Geo. Like, you're not supposed to be combining those two. It doesn't make much sense. And I can agree with the decision that they don't want to make specifically, like, Geo Dendro or Animo Dendro a thing. So that's fine. But the way they answered it, not great. Okay. Uh, with easy and open rules, given times, players will discover their own ways of developing builds. That is the fun of this game. Really? If that is the fun of this game, developing builds, why is the only way we can test our builds be the Spiral Abyss? Don't you think you should add more things to let us test our builds and strength? Uh, it's whatever. Let's keep going. Um... Uh, the world of Tevac continues to expand, giving players so many more challenges to complete daily. For example, domains, bosses, and ley lines. Is there a chance we will see a cap for original resin or a quicker regeneration rate to allow players to take on more of these challenges each day? While I would love this, I can already guess that their answer is no, because for two years the answer has been no. So let's see. Uh, domains, bosses, and ley lines are important to the means of to farm character and weapon ascension materials, and resin is required to claim these items as, as rewards. Meanwhile, we're also providing more options for gamers to obtain character development items. For example, many character and weapon ascension materials can be obtained and redeemed from events that we run periodically. They didn't even answer the question, but you can imply from their answer, they say no. So, uh, again, as someone who's been playing since launch, this is not surprising in the least. Uh, I've kind of already burned the bridge on this one, so I'm not really that salty. It's just to be expected now. <laughs> okay. New players may have been a bit lost when starting the Summertime Odyssey event because they missed Fischl's and Mona's first introductions. This also happened when Scaramouche showed up in the Inazuma's Archon quest after appearing in the Limited Time Mondstadt event. Is the team considering adding a way for new players to see or replay old story-related content and cutscenes that only existed in past limited time events? No, I can already t I didn't read the answer, but I can already tell you that's a no because for Scaramouche specifically, they actually changed the cutscene depending on if you actually met him in the uh, Mondstadt uh, event or not, which I thought was awesome. That was really cool. Um, and if they added this, the ability to play cutscenes and story content that was only in events, uh, that would ruin the FOMO that they're going for with the events. So of course they're not gonna they're not gonna do it. I don't think. But let's see. We're aware of this issue and are looking into solutions for it. Okay. Uh, on one hand, stories from limited of time events shall never become barriers to understanding and playing Archon quests. On the other hand, we're also working on beginner tutorial adjustments, client ca capacity optimization intelligent management of past content and other optimizations. And as our technology and capacities grow, we hope to have useful solutions that players welcome. I got literally nothing from that, from that answer. Okay. Uh, all right, sure. All right, next question. Um, costumes were added to the game last year, providing new stylish looks for some characters. How likely is it that the traveler becomes a recipient of one of these costumes? It would be interesting to see the Traveler in clothing that represents some of the regions they enter on the journey. As most of us have been saying, give the Traveler a new outfit. But no, I get, I'm not, I didn't, haven't even read it, but I guarantee you they're going to be like, Oh, well, the outfit is really important for them on an emotional bond with their sibling. So no, we're not going to be giving him a new outfit. Let's see. It is an intriguing idea to design outfits and accessories with regional characteristics for the Traveler. We don't have anything to share on that front, but we're all always considering new ideas. And you know what? I'll take that. That means it's still 
Potential. There's still potential for them to actually add an outfit for the Traveler. Okay, they didn't say no. They did not say no. As a follow-up to the previous question, Aether and Lumine seem to get fun little accessories during certain quests, like the, uh, the Fox Mask or Flower Crown, but they can only be worn for short periods of time. Have you ever considered turning these temporary accessories into permanent cosmetics? I would like that, because the, the Fox Mask on Ayaka's quest was super cute. We've been discussing uh, we've been discussing this question within the team and have some other other ideas similar to it. However, no news or details. Okay, whatever. Okay. On top of Genshin Impact, Hogiverse has also been working on Honkai Impact 3rd, Zenless Zone Zero, and Honkai Star Rail. There's been a crossover between Genshin Impact and Honkai Impact 3rd in the past where Kaching and Fischl arrived in Honkai Impact. Are there any plans to store to do the reverse and bring characters from Honkai Impact 3rd into Genshin Impact? God, I hope so, because if you're able to do one way, just do the other. It's fine. Um, in terms of characterization, we wish to channel more effort and attention into creating characters from the world of Genshin Impact. If there are new opportunities for crossover in the future, we will be sure to share them with everyone. Uh, so they said, yeah, maybe, but not really the priority. And those were the questions. Um, some of these answers are extremely concerning because uh, a lot of these uh, answers that they have really cater to brand new players or new players that they are continuing to get. So people who have invested a lot of time into the game and really like uh, working on their party, uh, like farming for artifacts, pretty much anyone who cares about like, not meta, but making like a strong-ish team and they want to test that, uh, they basically said, uh, fuck you, uh, you're stuck with the Spiral Abyss and nothing else. And that is very unfortunate. Like, very unfortunate. And they also mentioned that uh, older characters are pretty much not going to be receiving direct buffs. So, for example, uh, C6 Bennett is never going to get any better. It's always going to be a nerf. Uh, D Luke is going to be stuck. Amber is going to be stuck all the way in the bottom of the abyss. Thank you. Same with Aloy. Cool. Um, yeah. So, that is unfortunate. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, this interview? How do you guys think about the future of Genshin with uh, with uh, this uh, news? Let me know in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys later.